The Hylves are arguably the poster child for the Order Tide. With their donut home, piles of gold, and long list of potential allies, they can pose a major threat to any faction unfortunate enough to face them in the late game. So how do you go about kicking their Acer? Well, let's find out as we explore how to beat the Hylves. Right after I tell you about the new channel merch, faster than some sisters of Avalon can beat a giant. Here we go. We've got three new pieces on a brand new merch site. There's the Bodybuilder Long Sleeve, Can't Keep Me Down Hoodie, and No Head Dad Cap. All three are featuring awesome skelly based artwork and are the best quality I could find in the business. If you want to get dripped out beyond belief, then check out the link in the description and use code UNDEAD for 5% off storewide until the end of this month. I'm personally really proud of these new pieces, worked really hard to get them and the new store sorted, so I hope you check them out and consider picking something up. It helps support the channel and you can look good doing it. And checking back in with our giant, he's gone. Not a moment too soon. Now, on to how to beat the High Elves. Starting with the campaign, and even though they're not working with a massive amount of mechanics baseline, the High Elves still have a large number of ways to make your campaign grind to a frustrating halt. The first of these is the place that the majority of the High Elves call home, Ulthwan, aka the Donut. This place has two and a half major factions sitting on it with Tyrion, Alariel, and Tori Vress. As well as this, you have a bunch of minor High Elf factions that will either be conquered or confederated, likely by Tyrion, meaning once you hit the late game, this place will be working as one to repel any would-be invaders, making attack basically impossible without an armada of your own. The only threats to this plan are the Dark Elves guarding the Sword of Cain, as well as those raiding from the mountains to the north and west. Then you also have Nakari, who will likely be taken out before they can do too much to slow the Acer down. The point being that this place is a fortress and the longer the game goes on, the more of that fortress is likely to be owned by one faction, making it all the harder to assault. The moment you set foot on Ulthan soil, 10 Tyrian armies will make a beeline for your location and wipe you out in moments, unless you somehow manage to bring a large fleet of your own. Add on the fact that the ocean around the island is full of danger in the form of roaming pirates armies, vampire coast, possibly Norsk and Dark Elves, and is likely causing attrition to almost any faction that might come near. This place quickly becomes a sink of resources to assault, especially if you don't have the right climate preferences to sell. So your two options are to not attack them and hope they don't send any armies your way, which, let's be honest, will never happen because of the anti-player bias, or two, sail over there to try to attack them, land half dead already and have Tyrion cut the head off your exhausted corpse the moment you make land. The power of the donuts isn't the terrain itself, which we haven't even mentioned. Even if you do get there and land safely, you've still got to deal with the powerful gate settlements and the tide of heavily defended other settlements. But actually getting there in any state to attack is a challenge in itself and one that often seems like a waste of resources. So how do you go about taking on this seemingly impenetrable island fortress? You have to approach each of these dangers one at a time. So find an area to cross the sea where there aren't any other threats to your army, and this means you'll reach their shores as healthy as you can be. If your faction takes sea-based attrition, then using forced match to get there as quickly as possible is a great option. Be sure to turn it off once you get close to make sure you're battle ready, but when you're crossing open seas, move as fast as you can to limit damage. As I've mentioned several times, also make sure you bring in an appropriate amount of armies so you don't immediately go overwhelmed. You want enough that you can defend at least two fronts at once, so two, three, even four should be plenty. And finally, use a hero to scout out ahead and find a landing zone that's as safe as you can be from their armies. Just look for an area where none of them are sat waiting for you, maybe somewhere where you can snag a quick salmon to use a base camp while you shake off your sea attrition. There's no way to make assaulting Ulthwan easy, but this set of instructions should make it possible, which is honestly just about as good as you can ask for. One last quick thing about Ulthwan worth knowing is that the Sword of Cain spawns here. This legendary item grants some pretty powerful bonuses to whoever carries it, and none are better suited in terms of position and faction strength than the High Elves to wield it. If they get a hold of it before you reach them, try to hunt down the holder, normally Ilariel, as fast as possible and take it from her in combat. Yes, it might be a difficult battle, but once it's yours, you can turn those bonuses back on them and not have to deal with a souped up version of an already powerful Lord. Another area where the High Elves thrive is their economy. Their ability to produce heaps of resources, trade with basically everyone and print money with buildings as well as traits makes them one of the richest factions in the game. You don't even have to be doing that well and as soon as you get a few trade goods under your belt, you basically don't have to worry about money ever again. Now, having all the money in the world is great and all, but why does it make them harder to fight? Well, if the AI has any resources whatsoever, they're going to funnel them into armies and the only place they're going to send those armies is at the player. Now, I know the AI rules are different and they don't use gold in the traditional sense, but still, having a rich enemy is never good. Alongside the armies, you've got to deal with the possibility that they call in favours from other factions and trade partners and pay them to attack you too. All that gold can come down on you in a variety of ways and not one of them will make your life easier. Add on the fact that the High Elves gain vision over trade partners' territory and even if you're leaving them alone, attacking their allies can put them on high alert and as soon as they figure out where you are, you can bet your ass they're going to send everything they've got your way. There's not really a way to stop the High Elves from being rich once they get going, so my best advice can from this part of their campaign is to instead make it work for you. Sure, they're loaded, but if you can beat their settlements, especially those producing all their gold, the sacking income will be insane and you'll be well on your way to crippling their economy. If you take down their resource buildings and major income settlements, you'll be cutting the legs out from their economy and have it on its ass in no time. One final problem with them having so many trade partners aside from all that gold is the allegiance that it brings. 
As I said way at the start, High Elves are pretty much the poster child for the Order Tide, as more often than not, they end up leading it. All those buddies they have from all that trading are almost guaranteed to join their end game super alliance, and that means declaring war on them means declaring war on just about any other good faction left in the game. Obviously, this isn't really the best for you since all of those wars at once will spell end for even the most prepared of factions, so avoiding this is extremely advised. If they declare war on you, that's one thing, but avoiding triggering a mass war should be a pretty high priority if you can help it. The best way to do this is the good old join war exploit by finding someone already at war with the High Elves and off to join their war. This will only start a war against that specific faction without causing their allies to immediately join in too. Now, this isn't foolproof since allies can always just join in the war immediately afterwards anyway, but it at least means that you've done everything you can to avoid bringing it on yourself. If you're trying this, just make sure you're as prepared as you can be for an endgame war so if one comes knocking, you're not scrambling to prepare. Now, coming to the battle side of things, and as usual, I think this is the place where most people will struggle to beat the Acer. Not gonna lie, this is probably the hardest battle I've fought in this series so far. Now, the good thing about Find the High Elves is that all of their strength is mainly limited to one type and, let's be honest, one unit. The problem is, that one type of unit is out of this world good right from turn one, and it only gets more crazy the longer the game goes on. I'm of course talking about their ranged infantry, which are arguably the best in the entire game. Now, this isn't all they have, but it is their primary strength, so let's tackle it first. Starting at the beginning of the game, High Elves will have ranged infantry, which vastly outrange and outdamage basically anything they can come up against, including most artillery. This means that in almost 100% of battles, they can sit and force you to come to them, all the while peppering your army with arrows to pick them apart without any risk to themselves. As the game goes on, these units only get better with the Lord and Sea Guard dropping some range to also be effective in melee, making them a terrifying mid game doom stack. But of course, if we're talking endgame, we're talking about the Sisters of Avalon, aka one of the most overpowered units in the entire game since their launch, which at this point was almost six years ago, which uh, makes me feel a little bit sick. But let's just move on from that haunting revelation as fast as we can. Not only do they have obscenely long range being able to hit units from half a map away, but now the damage is magical, I'm pacing, and has a little bit of explosive power to cap things off. Then if enemy units somewhere manage to close the gap and get them in melee, they're not great, but they're good enough to fend off minor threats and delay dying to more major ones in time for help to arrive. All of this makes taking them out into a very difficult task since you have to make sure you have enough time in combat to take them down before help arrives, so distracting the rest of their army is a must. That means the usual front lines clash to keep their infantry busy, but also if they have cav giving them the distraction as well, as well as any fighting lords or heroes. You want to guarantee yourself as much time as possible to hit them until they run or die and get out without bringing too much risk on whatever you send in against them. Speaking of which, the best options for sending to take them out would be something fast that can do a decent bit of battling in melee. Sure, Warhounds are quick, but they probably lose in combat against them, so something a bit more substantial, like some sustained combat cav, would be a much better option. Shot cav or monsters would also work, in fact be even better, since melee defense is a lot less effective versus constant charging than sustained combats. However, that does also come with an increase to a level of micro, so make sure you're ready for it before putting them in your army. Otherwise, that potential increase in efficacy just becomes a decrease when they get stuck in melee with vastly inferior stats for it. Of course, if you can get them into melee with actual melee infantry units, then that works too, but speed units work best as they can avoid being picked apart as much on the approach, especially if you don't attack head-on and instead move diagonally to avoid taking too much fire. Ranged infantry aside, the High Elf roster is also chock full of other units that can give you a lot of trouble. They're really the empire of Warhammer 2, since they have strong options in every single category, making them one of the hardest factions to face in battle and build against. Next, we're going to tackle their front lines. From the get-go, they're not half bad, but by the end game, they are outright devastating, no matter what they're rocking. Swordmasters of Hoeth have extremely high damage output with high attack and armor piercing damage, but if you're talking toughness, the Phoenix Guard cannot be beat. Extremely thick armor, very high defense, a dash of physical resistance, expert charge defense, and nearly unbreakable leadership on top of damage that honestly isn't that much worse than the Swordmasters. These big boys are a wall, and getting through them will be nearly impossible, and you will not come out the other side unscathed. Now, one of the benefits of both endgame units, but in particular the Phoenix Guard, is the lack of ranged defense. Swordmasters have a bronze shield for some protection, but these guys have nothing, so every single missile you send their way is going to go straight to their health bar, provided it can get through their armor. Add on their slower speed, and using armor piercing ranged infantry becomes a must to take a chunk out of their HP before our front lines even clash. Once troops are locked in melee, trying to get an angle will be advised to keep the pressure on and take them out as quickly as possible. That said, trying to move ranged units onto the flanks of the front lines might not be so easy once you realize that the High Elves also have a pretty respectable cav roster. Right from the get go and all the way into the end game, they have a selection of units, both traditional cav as well as chariots, and all of them can speed around the battlefield, shutting down ranged units with ease. Now, this entire roster does have one critical weakness, and it's also their biggest strength. Everything they have is shot cap, which means devastatingly high charge bonus, but pitiful melee stars. So if you can pin them down and get them stuck in melee, especially against something even remotely competent, you should be able to shut them down before they can get too much value. 
Whether that means dragging them into combat against your melee troops, chasing them down with your own cavern monsters, or using spells and abilities to slow their speed to a crawl, just stop them charging and get them locked in melee against something that can fight. The rest should work itself out because nothing here is breaking 32 melee defense baseline. You might need some armor pacing in a bit of time, but once they stop moving, they're pretty much done for. Another thing to bear in mind with all of these human or I suppose elf based units is martial prowess and mastery. Every non-monstrous unit in the roster has one of these abilities and they do the same thing with varying values of granting units, increased attack and defense as long as they're over 25% HP. Especially for defense, this is pretty serious since 12 can spell the difference between a unit you can stomp and one that's going to be a serious problem. Now obviously the only way to counter this is to get their units below 25% HP and the only real advice I can give you for that is to focus on one unit at a time to get them below the threshold and once that's done, they should go down a whole lot faster. The reason I'm really bringing this up is because it means the stats that you see looking at their units in customs or on the campaign map aren't what you'll be up against in battle. Once you get into combat, these effects will immediately come online and they'll gain these stats until they take enough damage. Just be aware which units have which buffs and take caution when taking them on. Sure, 28 defense on the white lines is pretty pathetic, but 40 is a little bit more of a problem. I'm really not sure why it's not the other way around where they have these stats baseline and the ability activates to reduce them, but what do I know? Elves aside, the Acer also have access to a small but powerful selection of monstrous units. Early on, this is limited to small eagles and war lines, which are pretty deadly. However, in the late game, it's all about the dragons and phoenixes. The star dragon is the largest threat they can field and comes with a massive HP bar, very tough armor, great melee stats, and a huge weapon strength. This isn't even mentioning its breath ability, terror, or sprinkling of missile resist. Once this thing lands in combat, it's going to tear apart pretty much whatever it comes up against, and while surrounding it in melee with armor pacing, anti-large damage will do great, the safer and quicker way to take down these boys is good old fashioned range focus. 25% missile resist doesn't mean shit when hundreds of armor pacing shots are being slung at its gigantic hitbox. When flying, it's a decently easy target, but once it lands and gets into combat, prioritize getting an angle for your ranged troops to take it down as quickly as possible. As for Arcane Phoenixes, this is much smaller but no less threatening, boasting much faster speed and a meteor charge, as well as various resistances, magical passives, and its area Ember Storm ability. They're not quite as tough with less HP, armor, and melee stats, but they do have a much smaller hitbox, so the all ranged focus might be a little bit more challenging. They're still threatening, and if you can take them out, then absolutely do, but compared to the dragons, they're not quite as much of a threat. Once they land, bring in available melee units like infantry or cav to focus them down, or use available ranged units, but not if it's to the detriment of the rest of your army. No matter what monsters they bring, they can cause trouble, you just have to know which ones you need to have as a number one priority, and which ones are fine as long as they're not causing you any trouble right now. Lastly, we have the leadership options for the High Elves, and I think their main power they have is their cast lineup. Archmages come in all kinds of flavors, from the traditional high magic to the overpowered favorites like Fire and Shadows. Add to this their ability to get on Dragon Mounts, and these lords can provide a ton of value anywhere on the battlefield, as well as being very challenging to take out. The heroes have the same choice of lords, but only fire casters can get on dragons, making the rest a lot easier to take down. Aside from magic, they have great battlers, ranged specialists, and support units like the Law Masters of Hoeth. Each of these bring value in their own way and should be taken down or at least prevented from getting too much value whenever possible. If you can get a clean shot on an Archmage, on a Dragon, then take it out as wiping that unit out will deal a crippling blow to the entire army. So now we've laid out everything the High Elves can bring and how to beat them, let's make an army combat to take into battle against the Acer. The front lines initially I was testing out Halberdier since you have the best defense, but then I remembered that basically all the damages come from sisters, so missile defense and armor are way more important, so great swords it is. No, they don't have shields, but no endgame Empire melee infantry do, no, their defense isn't super high, but they have much more armor, which will keep them moderately more alive versus the ranged barrage, so it's the best we've got. Once again, to melee, their damage output will be decent, but they'll still need help to take enemies out before they take too much damage themselves. For ranged infantry, we're going to go for as much armor pacing as we can, and that means handgunners are the way to go. You'll need to manage their line of sight to make sure they're always firing, but you should have no shortage of targets to so prioritize the biggest threats to themselves, as they'll be your main source of damage. You could also bring artillery if you wanted, and if you do, I'd go for anti-infantry. The dragons and cav will move too fast to get easy shots for most artillery, so instead focusing on their ranged and melee infantry will get you more guaranteed damage and take out plenty of valuable units. Just make sure to keep them at a safe distance, as those cavern dragons can easily flank your damage and take them out if you're not careful. That said, I didn't bring any personally, just for ease of use. We're going to bring two kinds of cav, mainly because the Empire can, a couple of units of regular demogriffs to get into those Sisters of Avalon and shut them down as soon as possible, and a couple of units of demogriff halberds. The extra bonus versus large will help them take out any cav or monsters that come your way, and if there's none the army you end up against, then they'll still do great versus the back lines. Lastly, for leadership, you're going to want something for general battling, since that's always useful for getting around the map, fast to aid wherever needed, as well as a caster of some sort, focusing on armor reduction and slows to counter pretty much everything but their ranged infantry. Find the high elves will never be easy, but if you set up your army similar to this, you'll be prepared for the worst that they can possibly send against you. And that's everything you need to know on how to beat the high elves. Let me know if there's something I missed in the comments below. Vote on what faction you'd like to see next by joining the Discord in the description. Like, subscribe, and if you want to know how to beat more factions, then check out this video on how to beat Bretonia.